Hey everyone, I'm Case Aiken. So let's talk about the 2024 Dungeons & Dragons Barbarian, and how its existing subclasses interact. The Barbarian in 2014 was generally an okay frame at low levels, but one that didn't do so well at later levels. Unfortunately, this remains the situation in 2024. Don't get me wrong. The Barbarian was always far from the weakest class in the game. It did quite well at early levels, but that strong start made multiclassing tempting because the later levels really more iterate on the low level features rather than providing something completely new. The Barbarian's core identity has always been hit things the hardest, and it gets the tools to that right out of the gate in both 2014 and 2024. The 2024 version is across the board improved, but it doesn't completely break the mold, unlike the 2024 subclasses. So we've got four in the new player's handbook, with one being brand new, the World Tree, one being brand new in all but name, the Berserker, one being a recalibrated option, the Zealot, and one being pretty much the same except for a brand new name, the Wildheart. And I will say this, even if it wasn't the brand new one, I'd be most excited about the World Tree Barbarian. Fun fact, I have an abstract tattoo of the World Tree itself on my shoulder blade in the real world, so I may be biased. However, this is an excellent subclass for Viking or nature themed characters or for aspiring lockdown builds. This one starts slow by just handing out temp HP when you rage, but later gives you the ability to control the battlefield with teleportation effects and increased reach. It's a new type of tanking for 5e, making enemies literally unable to get away from you. Now, the Berserker received quite a bit of love in 2024. When first published in 2014, this was pretty much not worth playing because the cost to use any of their special abilities were so high, but now it's a potent damage dealer with few drawbacks aside from a lack of versatility. Their frenzy ability works differently now, dealing extra damage on your first attack instead of a bonus action attack. More importantly, they no longer take a level of exhaustion for using it. Then their later level features remain mostly similar, but come on a, a different order. The Zealot was introduced in Xanathar's Guide to Everything as a replacement damage dealing subclass for the Barbarian after the failures of both the Berserker and Battle Rager, which we will talk about momentarily. In 2024, it remained a great option despite a new landscape. There are clear similarities in design to the Berserker, with them both sharing once per round damage spikes and similar late game utility add-ons to the Barbarian frame. This was true with the 2014 version and continues to be true for the 2024 version. In 2024, it's had a few quality of life improvements that rely less on a metagame perspective, like the previous incarnations not costing as much to resurrect if killed. Now the features that they have are active ones that you can use in regular gameplay, which is a good change. In 2014, we had the Totem Warrior, but in 2024, it has been renamed the Wildheart, presumably with some mind towards greater inclusivity and cultural sensitivity. This is probably a good call. We got the heads up about the name change when it was in Baldur's Gate 3, by the way. When it was first published in the 2014 Player's Handbook alongside the Berserker, this subclass was the clear winner and has remained competitive in the decades since. It was one of the more modular subclass designs from 2014, along with classes like the Hunter Ranger, where you picked your class features at each level. In this case, the things you selected were all animal themed. In 2014, at each level, you received a subclass feature, originally bear, wolf, and eagle, with elk and tiger added in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, each giving different features at each level. In 2024, the names of the animal spirits are different at different levels to help clarify that you do not need to pick the same one at each subclass level. It's a choice at each level, not a track, if that makes sense. And this is definitely a good call. The animal spirit abilities have all been retooled, with some being nerfed and others being buffed or replaced. Each level is less likely to have a clear winner now. I am, however, a little bummed that we lost the elk and tiger options, because they were at least interesting additions. But the incredible buff, and this is burying the lead here, that this subclass has received is that you can now change out which animal spirit you are attuned to whenever you rage. This is my favorite kind of buff, because it doesn't change the overall power of action in any given situation, but it does make it more likely that you have the optimal choice when the situation arises. As we will discuss, this kind of spur-of-the-moment power selection has become more of the general design philosophy 
over the life of 5e, and I'm happy to see it continue in the 2024 update. You would be forgiven for mistaking the Wild Heart for a new subclass, but it does retain the skeleton and muscles of the old Totem Warrior, just with a thicker hide. I'm very happy with the updates that they've made to this one. The new offerings are all fantastic options for Barbarians, but this is a case where there are some really good legacy options as well, so let's talk about them, and let's see which ones are worth considering in a 2024 game. Subclass levels come on for Barbarians the same way between 2014 and 2024. They get features at 3rd, 6th, 10th, and 14th. I'm going to go down the list and explore what they got at those levels, how they stack up, and what I would expect regarding updates if they were ported over. We open with the Path of the Ancestral Guardian, THE Defender build for the 5e Barbarian. When you raged, spirits would swirl around you and mark your targets with debuffs and damage. Third level let you force a target of your attacks to have disadvantage attacking any allies of yours. Nice for forcing enemies to not go after the squishy wizard. Sixth level let you reduce the damage dealt to your allies, strengthening the incentive for everyone to go after you. Tenth level let you cast Augury or Clairvoyance, pretty standard utility level type feature. And 14th level lets you deal damage as a reaction to punish those enemies who hurt your allies. The Ancestral Guardian is good at being a tank while raging, but it did suffer in 2014 from not having many features that worked when you weren't raging. In 2024, Barbarians are way less likely to run out of rage, so they gain quite a bit in the update. I think this is one where the flavor text does a lot, and then the mechanics themselves are sound but not flashy. I'd personally rather be a World Tree or Wild Heart Barbarian, but they don't quite do the same job quite as well. Now, while we may have begun with a completely serviceable entry, our next candidate would need serious revisions to be viable in 2024. Of course, I'm talking about the Battle Rager from the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. The Battle Rager was infamous for both being underpowered and one of two subclasses that initially were restricted by race slash species. In this case, one was required to be a dwarf to use. The other was the Bladesinger Wizard, which initially required you to be an elf, but that was removed when it was updated in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Let's see. Third level was proficiency in spiked armor, which, when worn and raging, allowed for a bonus action D4 attack, which uh, I guess was meant not to eat the Berserker's lunch and uh, didn't. Sixth level was temp HP that basically functions like damage reduction. Tenth level was a bonus action dash only while goddamn raging. Fourteenth level was what I assumed were the table stakes of spiked armor, damage to anyone who hits you, but in this case, only while goddamn raging. All of these are pretty thin as far as features go. Not necessarily bad, but you could probably roll them into one or two levels of the subclass, and they'd feel about on par with what most medium to good subclasses get. This was an underachiever of a subclass that is in desperate need of a rebuild. Like, it should be a honey badger of a subclass. I've always dreamt of making a Warforged Battle Rager with the spiked armor being integrated into the character's body, but this is not worth considering in regular play. So with that said, we're one for two, and look who's at the bat! Path of the Beast, and this guy, this guy, I like this guy. While it shares some themes with the Totem Warrior slash Wildheart in that it is animal-based, this one is more lycanthropic. First up, this subclass is very flexible, allowing you to change your selected animal traits each time you rage. Wonderful design choice, but then this is one of the more recent entries, coming from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Third level, when you rage you manifest one of three types of natural weapons, each with their own pros and good pros at that. This was the subclass meant to open up unarmed combat to barbarians, and did well with the caveat that it really only worked while raging. Sixth level was a movement option that you could switch out on a short rest. Nothing game-breaking, but good stuff and not rage-dependent. Tenth level was an interesting controller option that let you either deal psychic damage or force the target of your attack to attack their own ally. Weirdly, this is making the Path of the Beast the barbarian entry in Tasha's secret theme of psychic subclasses for all of the classes. FYI, 
Psy Warrior Fighter, Soul Knife Rogue, Aberrant Mind Sorcerer, Order Domain Cleric, and Fey Wanderer Ranger. 14th level was a nice little motivational roar, a nice little emphatic surge of a leader ability to support that psychic class narrative. No dead levels here and no punitive restrictions binding you to a selection, it's a great substitute for a bear warrior. Or like a good substitute for a non-caster wild shape build. This is a very good subclass that really doesn't need any updates to see play in 2024. It doesn't even have the now verboten design philosophy of literal proficiency times per day abilities that you saw in a lot of Tasha's subclasses. I would totally allow this. Next up is the literal last subclass introduced into 5e. From Big B Presents Glory of the Giants, we have the Path of the Giant. This big boy feels like the designers realized they screwed up when it came to throne weapons and patched the barbarian to work with them finally. So in that sense, some of the features of this subclass are now baked into the core barbarian. Does that invalidate the need for this subclass? Not at all. I freaking love this subclass and have seen it used to great effect. Third level, you learn to speak giant and either the druid craft cantrip or more likely thaumaturgy. However, the meat of the level is that you grow big and increase your reach when you rage. Oh, and now rage works with throne weapons, which again is no longer needed to be said. Sixth level is an elemental damage rider for every attack you make with a weapon. Plus, said weapon gains the throne and returning properties. This makes the Path of the Giants the true ranged barbarian build. I've seen this one used extremely efficiently in a fight with a Hydra being able to whip out on command reliably damage types that at minimum bypass resistance and can potentially be a vulnerability is incredible for the gameplay loop of this subclass. 10th level is the unofficial fastball special ability. Throwing really big things like people doesn't usually work well in 5e, but this is an ability that makes it work. And then 14th level is a boost to everything you do. You grow even bigger now and your elemental damage intensifies. Nice, but not earth shattering. Some luster is lost now that the core barbarian can throw weapons fairly well, but still this is a versatile and strong barbarian. I'd allow it with no modifications and I doubt it would need much to be tweaked for 2024 aside from removing the text about thrown weapons and maybe giving it a ribbon feature to replace it. The Path of the Giant is a great alternative to the Rune Knight Fighter when you want a class that grows big to smash things. The Path of the Storm Herald is one that I really wanted to love when it first came out. This is one of many attempts to add magical flavor to the Barbarian, in this case by giving them auras of energy effects based on different terrains. The three terrains were desert, sea, and tundra, with desert being fire effects, sea providing storms, and tundra weirdly providing mostly temporary HP, but in theory is cold effects. This one required you to pick a specific terrain which informed all abilities, but you got to switch them as you leveled up. Third level introduced your aura of effect, with desert doing small fire damage to everyone in the aura, roughly scaling according to proficiency, but not quite exactly. C being a very weak single target lightning strike, and Tundra being an aura of temp HP for allies. Sixth level was an energy resistance in line with whatever terrain you selected, along with some minor movement and interaction abilities. Fortunately, none of this required that you be raging at the time, and I actually rather like this level. Tenth level lets you share the resistance that you gained at six to your allies in your aura while you are raging. 14th level is an additional application for each terrain type, dealing damage with desert, knocking enemies prone with sea, or reducing movement speed with tundra. And I gotta say, the Storm Herald doesn't provide enough. At minimum, if they were to update this to 2024, I'd hope they would institute the ability to choose which terrain you are synced to each time you rage, which is my house rule when DMing one of these guys. However, even greater flexibility doesn't solve that this just doesn't keep up. The 14th level in particular seems so lackluster that it should have just been rolled into level three. I do like the Tundra the most. It provides okay party support and probably is the most compatible with your party. Honestly, if someone wanted a magical vibe 
vibe on their Barbarian, I'd point them at either the World Tree or Giant's Path. The Storm Herald was too weak when it was first introduced, and time hasn't helped the comparison. Lastly, we have the Path of the Wild Magic Barbarian, which also attempts to infuse magic into your raging form. I don't typically like random effects, but understand why some people do, and this is an okay version of that. Third level provides a table of random magical effects that occur when you rage. A few of these are pretty good, most of them are fairly mid, and only a few of them are not helpful, with none of them being all that bad, per se. This was a step up from the 2014 Wild Magic Sorcerer, though not as refined as the 2024 version of the Wild Magic Sorcerer. Sixth level lets you be a helper to the casters in the party by recovering spell slots for them, or the mundanes by giving them a weaker version of Bless. 10th level lets you re-roll on your magic table if you take damage. And then 14th level gives you more control over your wild magic selection, though not full on letting you pick every time. I will be honest, the majority of play that I've seen for the wild magic barbarian has been Karlak in Baldur's Gate 3, a fact that makes it surprising not to see wild magic in the 2024 player's handbook. This one does all right, but it isn't a showstopper in my book, except for the rare moments when it is, and that's when it really shines. It's all random, which makes it difficult to properly quantify. I don't think it necessarily needs a revision before being used in 2024, but it also wouldn't be my first pick. I think that the World Tree Barbarian gives you better magical options that you can rely on consistently, but for those that really enjoy rolling on a table, this gets the job done. And that's the Barbarian. In 2024, it still faces many of the same problems that the 2014 version did, even if those problems are not as severe. The existing subclasses all benefit from the revisions to the core Barbarian, making even the worst a passable option at low levels. I remain of the belief that the fighter is more elegantly designed when it comes to the fine art of hitting stuff, but I enjoy all the archetypes that Wizards of the Coast rolled out for the Barbarian. They are all fun, even if some were better than others. As it is, of the 2014 offerings not updated in 2024, only the Battle Rager and the Storm Herald aren't really up to snuff power-wise in the new rule set, which is pretty good. Next time, I want to spend some time talking about a class that I think about a lot for some reason, so we'll be talking about the Ranger. But until then, well, just roll with it.